millions of fans all over the world still think of him as the Sundance Kid. He's romanced on screen at least some of the world's most beautiful women. And even though he's been around for more than 20 years, he's still the number one pin-up boy to millions of fans. Australian audiences can now see him alongside Meryl Streep in Out of Africa, a movie nominated for 11 Academy Awards and tipped to take out the Oscar for Best Picture. But as we discovered when we met the Sundance Kid on his home ground in Utah, there's a lot more to Robert Redford than just a pretty face. Better get ready. Ready? No, we'll jump. Like hell we will. To most of us, Robert Redford will always be Paul Newman's mustachioed mate in that fun movie, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. But to find the real Robert Redford, you have to get well away from the Hollywood Valley Who and go high into the Utah snow country. I knew that the business I was in was going to be a rat race, it was going to be tough. The lifestyle was not one I particularly was interested in being in. And I wanted to alternate that, which was going to be my profession and, and require a certain amount of me, with an alternative, which had to do with the outdoors and space. So that's what this is. Back in the early 60s, when he made his first real money out of movies, Redford went on a land-buying spree here in the Wasash Mountains, about 50 kilometres from Salt Lake City. He's never really stopped buying huge chunks of this magnificent country. And now, today, he owns what amounts to a private mountain kingdom, which he calls, predictably, Sundance. It's, so, it's uh, certainly a lot different from a Hollywood lot. Yeah, that I will say. It's <laughs> different from a Hollywood lot, although some people think this is a set. Yes, it could be. I imagine your audience think this is real, huh? No, I think it's pretty we spent real. spent a week putting this all up. <laughs> if the wind doesn't come up, we'll be all right. I can but, guarantee him it's real. Uh, Do you think that over the years that you've been in the industry that you could have could have coped if you didn't have this place to come to, this haven? Nah. Nah. I couldn't have. Uh, I really need to get outdoors periodically or I go nuts. These days, when Redford reluctantly leaves Sundance for Hollywood, he does so on his own terms around six million dollars a movie and the privilege of choosing his own roles. Which film do you think expressed Robert Redford more than any other? There's no one in particular. There's to be a composite of many films. I mean, you could take it from Butch Cassidy. There's a lot of me in that. Uh, certainly all the President's Men, The Candidate, Downhill Racer, Ordinary People, The Natural. I mean, you can go down the line, you know, and usually most so of So you're putting yourself together through, the, through these yeah, films. Yeah, maybe I'll find out who I am before it's all <laughs> over. But I, I, for years, was ambivalent about being an actor because it was a hard thing for me to adjust to because I used to make fun of it as a kid. I thought it was not an honest living. It is. I wish I could talk to myself as a kid you know, and say, what were you wrong? It's, it's a hard business. It's tough on the emotions. It's tough on a family. It's tough on your psyche. Uh, it requires things of your emotional apparatus that nobody appreciates very much and the hours are long and difficult so until recently it seemed the pressures of stardom hadn't affected Redford and his celebrated 27 year marriage to Lola Van Wagenen however now the Hollywood gossip mill is grinding out the rumors that the Redford perfect match is in trouble that's the one thing Redford himself refuses to talk about he only allowed us this sort of access on the condition that his private affairs were strictly off limits but he did make his views on media muckraking in general pretty clear. From what you say, though, it would appear that, that, uh, that you've probably been misinterpreted a lot over the years. Quite a bit. Why do you think that is? Why does that happen? It's the nature of the press, excuse me. Um, the fact is, as the press regulates itself less and less with the need to sell paper, I mean, profit, I think, drives the whole thing. The need to sell papers uh, puts less of a standard on quality. So as a result, distorting things or just saying things irresponsibly seems to be less control than it was but I that's part of the deal I mean that, that so that's the way it goes probably one of the negative aspects of me taught not doing more interviews is that you get too easily misinterpreted or interpreted out of thin air was there ever a time though you thought that Robert Redford the individual had been lost in all that hype that goes yeah. with being a star yeah, I still think that exists to an extent 
Maybe, you know, it just gets so old, people say, is he still around? But I, at this point, <clears throat> yeah, I still feel that. Good morning. Have you had trouble? Now and then, have you? Redford, the son of a Californian milkman, made some pretty dubious films along the way to stardom. Oh, get away from there! Shoo! Shoo! Shoo? Oh, that's all my crystal, my, my Limoges. Ah, they didn't know it was Limoges. But his latest role, opposite Meryl Streep in Out of Africa, epitomizes Redford the man. Yes, I've come out to marry Baron Blixen. Do you know him? Right, yes. Yes, we plan to start a dairy. Is it a bit soon for that, milk at the door? Some have said the part of Dennis Finch Hatton was tailor-made for Redford. It's not a joke. People marry, it's not revolutionary. There are some animals that mate for life. Geese. You know, you use the damn animals for your own argument. You won't let me use them for mine. I'd mate for life. One day at a time. In turn of the century Africa, Finch Hatton is the ultimate individualist. That's pretty much the way 48-year-old Redford sees himself in the 80s. Only he's fighting for his personal and artistic independence in the Hollywood jungle. Well, Hollywood, as a real place, has fallen victim to the thrust that's overtaking much of the country, which is the pursuit of profit. Where the film business gets into trouble is when it tries to run art like a business. The fact is, art will survive anything, I think. I mean, in centuries from now, art will survive over who runs what studio, whether there is a studio, whether there's a system or whatever, art will survive. Just about everyone has heard of the Sundance Kid, but it's unlikely that even the most ardent fan would know about this place, the Sundance Institute. The Sundance Institute is the other half, or rather, one of the other sides to Robert Redford. For five years now, he's been turning over his mountain hideaway to promising young filmmakers to help them develop their ideas and their talents independently of Hollywood. Redford's big on independence. In fact, his more cynical detractors say he's as much a starry-eyed idealist as he is a star. Even still, with the Institute here, a lot of people think, well, what's he really doing, you know? Is it some opportunity that he's trying to create for himself? Is it... People doubting your motives. Yeah, but that's gonna happen, that's just comes with the territory. I'm kind of used to that. But but the fact is, if you're here for any length of time, you can see how really good it is, how exciting it is. Action! There you are! Come on, come on! Ready and action. Hey, man, I didn't do nothing to you. I know that. Now, once he does that... Redford puts his name and his fame behind the project, but not his personal fortune. The money to run it comes from this place the Sundance Resort, where skiers and tourists pay to help finance Redford's personal kind of American dream. The Institute is about work. It's about development and work, and nothing more. We're not about profit, we're not about product, we're about bringing new filmmakers here and improving their skills through the process that we provide to the point where they're gonna get a film made that might not have been made, and also their skills will be improved enough that they'll be able to go on. But even independent films need a showcase. And Redford Sundance Institute also manages the United States Film Festival, where young unknowns can try out their movies. At the moment, the unknowns that Redford is most keen to promote are, in fact, Australians. I think the Australians have, have had more to do with the movement in film over the last decade than any other country. And I think that they've provided a model that, would be, that we could all well learn by. I think the feeling of independence, which interests me, what Sundance is about, what the festival is all about, is best reflected in the movement coming out of Australia. And the support that the Australians are giving their filmmakers is the kind of support I wish our country could give ours. So I'm very proud of it. I think you ought to be too. I think you should come down there and have a look at it. Close up. Yeah. <laughs> We're delighted that uh, Robert has chosen Utah really as his home and uh, chosen to uh, found the Sundance Institute. There's a touch of political irony about Redford accepting an accolade from the governor of Utah. Not too long ago, some were predicting the activist actor would run for office himself. His strong views on social issues and the environment make him a political animal, but apparently not a political candidate. 
Why do you think over the years there have been the recurring rumours, at least, and speculation that Robert Redford was going to uh, go into politics? Well, you've said you wouldn't ape Reagan in that way. Well, one, they didn't listen to what I said, which is that it would never happen. But, and the reason probably nobody paid any attention to it is politicians are very great by starting their campaigns by denying that they're going to run. <laughs> so I probably got lumped into that deal. But uh, I think probably that I look like somebody that would be a candidate for public office, I think largely because I made a film about politics and how I feel about the political system. And if anyone paid attention to that film, they would know that I could never run for political office. <laughs> As movie stars go, you'd have to rate Robert Redford as a man of principle. The irony is that to maintain his jealously guarded independence and privacy, even he, occasionally, has to make a public spectacle of himself. It's Redford's face, not his philosophy, that sells movie tickets. <laughs> Have you said that, uh, that you reckon your days are numbered as an actor? And that you haven't yeah, got lo much longer to go? Yeah, I did say that. That's true. I, numbered by my own design and by probably the public's just getting tired or wanting to see other stuff, but are getting too old, I don't know. But yeah, I did say that. Yeah, in I, fact, I, in fact the, the quote that I read said that you thought you wouldn't be an actor by the mid-80s. Didn't say that. I wouldn't limit, I wouldn't. So, so how, long, how, long, like how long do you think you have got to go? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't. I just know that I'm more and more interested in directing and um, more and more increased tired of being too much in the public eye. Hey, kid, how good are you? Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.